Hey everybody, it's Bo, and I want to say hello. I've been absent for a little while. Oh, a lot of stuff going on, <clears throat> and uh, end of the year, taxes, all that stuff, but hopefully I'll get back in the groove with a little bit of uh, more video. Hey, in this video, we are going to talk about four years. This is my fourth year in Rolling Thunder Cabin on Wheels. And uh, I want to talk about what I love, what I don't like, what I would do different, what I am going to add, what I'm going to change, what I'm not going to change, and uh, give you some ideas on layout. And uh, it's all about the weight, baby. If you want to pull a trailer with a six-cylinder, you know, most six-cylinders are rated about 5,000 pounds, and uh, I wouldn't go over 35, so I think we come in under three, so... So stick around and uh, I'm gonna go over all this stuff and Rolling Thunder Cabin on Wheels. All right. <clears throat> Again, welcome to Rolling Thunder, my cabin on wheels. The reason there's so much wood in here is I wanted it to look like a cabin. Um, I love natural wood. I don't really like painting it. I figure someday if I want to remodel, maybe I'll paint some of the walls white and leave some of the wood. Uh, but right now, I kind of like it the way it is, simple. And let's just talk about how it all started. It all started because wanting to pull it with a six-cylinder a vehicle an SUV and that's a lot of people out there the trucks are expensive and SUVs get a little better gas mileage if it's going to be a regular vehicle so anyway it started off with a teardrop and man did I get excited about wanting to build a teardrop I thought that's got to be cool then I looked at maybe buying one and there's uh, in Denver a manufacturer uh, that's really reasonable and we went and looked at it and it's just no space. I mean, it's just uh, You know, but you can pull it with anything pretty much because they're they're what 800 pounds 900 pounds maybe 1200 uh, At the most so they're they're fairly light so you can really pull with anything, but then I start thinking about it. I'm like well instead of building one or uh, such how about a cargo trailer so, what the formula is, tow capacity 5,000, that's, that's most six-cylinder uh, SUVs out there. You know what, in Colorado, I, you, I, I would try and be half that, and maybe a little over half. Like I say, I think we're 26, 27, maybe 28. This cargo trailer empty was 1,500 pounds. And that was the empty weight that you can see of any trailers. And that's your starting point. So for me, I needed the lowest starting point. So I wanted to find the largest trailer with the lightest weight. And the largest I could go was six by 14 single axle. Now, again for a six cylinder now if i had a truck and i were building this i would do a tandem axle and i would do a seven by 14 because or even yeah seven by 14 that's pretty standard so seven foot wide you can put the bed across and you have a lot more room and even if you go this way you have a lot more room on the side um, that's the ticket and you have four tires and that gives you a little protection if you get a flat. I like that. But again, I have a single axle and that was the only way I could do. You'll find your lightest trailers out there are single axle. No water tanks, no gray tanks, just portable uh, five gallons uh, in the sink here. Uh, let me open that up. We'll get a closer look. Under here I keep a couple jugs 
I use uh, water cooler jugs because you can fill those up in the store if you need to. We don't really use it for drinking water. We only use it for uh, washing dishes, washing our hands, uh, stuff like that. If I were to do anything different on that, there is a seven gallon jug. I would do that and I may try and switch to those eventually. The one thing about those uh, drinking water, five gallon, the ones that go in the coolers where you flip them, if they get in real cold weather after time, they get brittle and they start to break. So you have to be careful that they do have a life thing, but all plastics like that. In the winter time here in Colorado, I try and take anything water, plastic, uh, jugs, coolers, I take all that stuff uh, out because it's the sub-zero temperatures. We only get about a week out of the year, but that does something to plastic that just makes them crack and whatever. So, so I don't have anything in here yet because we're still, we still got another month or so. May is the month that we start. We're fair weather campers uh, and uh, it's just more enjoyable. Other than that, I'll just go out in my car. But um, so on the water, that would be the one thing that I would change. But we like it. I mean, in this sink, is great the largest sink you can get the larger the better the faucet i had on here was a pull down when i first built it and it became a victim of uh freeze i didn't i must not have ran the pump and got all the water out the line ended up freezing and i couldn't find another one so this is what they call a wet bar sink simple easy I can't turn it on because the water's not in here. Hey, it's Bo from the future. Hey, for some reason, some of my kitchen video got cut off, so I'm gonna add to it. I've already done some changes, so you're gonna see some of this disappear as we go past this. Anyway, stove. This is a Suburban three burner. Love it, works really well. To be honest with you, two burners would be fine. We've never really used a third, but I like the space. So I would recommend the Suburban uh, stove. If I were gonna change anything, what I would do is I would add a hood and a vent out because uh, we have to really make sure the fan's on and the windows are open when we cook or it'll uh, send off it'll uh, make the smoke detector rayon detector go off so and that's a good thing you want that to go off if there's an issue but uh, we have to make sure it's well ventilated but if there was a hood with a vent right here that would be perfect the other thing i was thinking about doing was adding a sheet metal uh back splash here and there uh just to go behind here it would add a total of eight pounds, plus I'd have to drill through it. I decided not to. So that idea is off the burner for right now. Uh, one thing I recommend is your plates and your cups and things, um, put them places where you can see them. So if we wash dishes, we can put everything right here. Now all our glasses, you know, we have a couple extra. We only really need two, but now we have four. So these are secure in here. We'll wash them. They'll go right in there. I did end up tying these down. So now they are secure with uh, bailing. I use a lot of uh, bailing wire. That works really good because it's, it's strong and it's, it's uh, thin enough that it's not, it's easy to work with. So there is a plug back here. Sometimes we have a uh, milk box heater that we keep under the bed as well as the fireplace so we'll set that up here it has a thermostat um, that's a good go anything with the thermostat's good that way it doesn't constantly run huh, let's see so that covers all that oh the refrigerator this is a regular refrigerator we've had no problems with it works very well we use it as a regular refrigerator when we're on shore power and when we don't have shore power, we use it as an ice box. So I keep frozen Gatorades. And then in the freezer, I keep a solid. And I recommend using like an antifreeze 
plastic thing because the plastic seems to hold up. Some of those plastic, like I've tried iced tea jugs, they don't work because the plastic, when it freezes, it just cracks. There is plenty of space in here. What's good about doing this is when we're in transit, it keeps everything cold. If we're boondocking, I get four days out of it. If we have shore power in transit, it keeps it cold. And then when we plug in, this stays frozen in the freezer. So it works well. I also keep a Tupperware for our meat. So a lot of times I'll freeze some of the meat, maybe the hot dogs or sausage or anything that I know we're gonna eat the second day. And I keep that in here so nothing drips and all that. But there is plenty of space in here. Oh, this came off. Okay, heater. This is a heater, buddy. This is my second one. The other one I got about five years out of. This has been the most efficient, inexpensive way for us to go. They're safe indoors. Uh, the key to them to make them last is you must put a filter on it. So there's a little, little silver uh, cartridge filter that goes on here that you screw in and cost about 12 bucks. I recommend getting that and it'll last a lot longer. The other key is you wanna cover it when you're not using it. So I just use this plastic bag. And voila, fits really well. Keeps it, the dust out because if you're going down dirt roads or, and all that, dust kicks up and ends up getting in here. And so if you're not using it, cover it, you'll get a lot more years out of it. Oh, the other thing is toaster oven. It was either a microwave, you know, I was thinking about it, but decided not to. Ended up putting a toaster oven. We've never used it. In four years, it's still brand new. We may someday, but just for the record, most of the time we grill outside or we cook in here. And we do cook in here a lot because we end up eating after sundown and the bugs start coming out right around sunset, so. But we do both. So it depends on a lot of different options. That concludes the kitchen part of the future. So back to Obo, see ya. And this, it's all storage up here. So we have plenty of storage without having to have a lot of cabinets. Cabinets are heavy. So everything in here is just pallet wood and uh, pine and keeping it really close. So all the uh, side cabinets or whatever you want to call them, nooks, I can put a lot of stuff in. And then the bed has a lot of storage and that's also to offset the weight because the uh well we're going to look at that because i'm going to show you that because i want to talk about what i would change and what i was going to change but i decided i can't do it because i'd have to really redo this whole thing and that's a big job and i don't want to do this everything in here is built for a reason to hold something or to flip up flip down uh, even the table is meant so you can sit at the table uh, from the bed and then here on this side and then the back counter is designed so the height that you could actually sit at the back uh, table that looks out the back and uh, that's comfortable. So moving things around and then also balancing it, you know. Uh, I didn't want to have all the weight back there because that'll make you fishtail. So this was to offset it. So anyway, uh, other than that, oh, and then there's some really good storage in here. I keep all the pots and pans. I have a wine box that I keep. Sometimes I'll put a bottle of wine in there, but any liquid, like liquid soap, but anything that needs to stand straight up, I put it in there because it has the dividers, cutting boards. 
pretty much go in there when we're in traveling. Um, but I would like to put some sheet metal, but I don't know though, because it's gonna add weight and I'm really worried about the tongue weight. And these I always put down here, down below, but I decided I'm gonna put some bailing wire so that I don't have to keep moving them. It's all about setup also. That was the thing, we loved our pop-up. And the thing I liked about the pop-up camper was uh, the airflow. Man, you open all the windows up and the screens are there and uh, it's really nice and it's pretty roomy actually for uh, that kind of thing. But I hated the setup. And you can't just pull over and have lunch inside or cook or you know, anything like that. I mean, uh, a teardrop, you could do that because you could just do it right out the back and it's still attractive. I really, I would love to have another one, just a little teardrop just for maybe some uh, photo trips to keep it light. But uh, anyway. You know, and the other parts versus a teardrop was uh, standing up. You can't stand up in a teardrop. And what I love is we can pull over, we can cook if we want, we keep a porta potty from under the bed. You pull that out if you need to use the bathroom. Um, it's just comfortable. Plus, there's plenty of room in this area if I want to put a bicycle over here. That's what that was designed for. So uh, I don't know if you can see the clip here, but I have uh, some wall things. But uh, you know, and again, it's made to look like a cabin. That's why it's called Rolling Thunder, Cabin on Wheels, Gourmet Kitchen in the front, Cantina in the rear. Anyway, so now we're gonna switch to the back. I'm gonna give you that view. And what I was gonna change, and I'm gonna show you why uh, I'm not gonna change it, just because of some things. But uh, it's to give you some ideas, design ideas. I mean, like I say, Having this open space here with the flip up tables, it's great because if I want to move something, I still got a lot of stuff that I could, you know, I could put stuff on the bed and I could actually put something big right here if I need to, as long as I can get it through the door. Oh, what would be another thing too? The door. If you can get one with an RV with a screen door, I would get that. I don't think I had that option and I should have looked for it. They're very expensive if you do them aftermarket. You're talking eight, nine hundred dollars if you're lucky, six. But it's hard to find that size because RV doors are bigger. And this is a cargo trailer. So, anyway, there might be a good source out there, but still, like I said, they're very expensive. Those um, magnet uh, screens, they work really well. I like them because they come with the little uh, Velcro things that you can attach them on there. I don't like to do things with glue just because uh, if it gets really hot in here, things tend to unglue. But so far, everything we've had on the walls, we've had no problem with it, so it's worked out really good. But I have every, I have it tacked by uh, tacks all the way around. But the point being is you get a bunch of those and they're great because you can use them for remotes uh, we have a uh, a phone that goes here just for this. It's our house phone, but it has all the music and everything on it. We don't use it as a phone. We use it for Wi-Fi, and we keep that here. Oh, what would be the other thing is this works out really good. Speakers, two in the front, two in the back. I don't have any music on because of copyright, but uh, the reason I put it here was so from the back when it's open, we can use the remote and I can change it or lower it or raise it or whatever. So it's here for a reason. Everything is here for a reason, you know, storage wise and you know, this, everything. So setup is minimal. It has a card. This one actually has a card in it. So I have our whole library on it. We just shuffle. It's like having a radio on. And then I do have this to hook up to uh, a pad or our other device that we have that we use here or even my own phone because I have all my music on here as well uh, so that works out really good and lights I, I love lights so you know I got them everywhere and you can change them okay make a liar out of me there you go so I like that and this has worked out really well 
So anyway, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please leave them down below. You know, got anything going on? Any tips you want to leave? You know, please do. And uh, so, okay, let's flip it and I'll show you the other side. Other cables, fantastic. You know, it's nice, it's big. I wouldn't change anything on this because there's storage underneath here and it keeps everything intact. So that works out well. Also, this little ottoman I love because it's all storage. This is kind of just wires and extra towels if I, if, if uh, water or anything, wire, you know, all kinds of stuff. What would I change? Well, what, I, what I'm gonna change is we have two lead acid batteries on the solar. They're 101 amp hours a piece. You can only use 50%. So that gives you 100 amp hours actually. Finding, using, you know, we run the radio. I have a lot of lights. The fan seems to suck up a lot of juice and the pump, water pump sucks up a lot of juice. Last summer we ran out. And it's interesting because the controller shuts it down if it goes below 50%. And it's like a blackout, like everything shuts off. But if you just reset it, you can still use the lights because the lights don't draw as much and uh, you'll still be fine. And then of course your solar will recharge it up. The other thing, what would I change? So well, I just got an extra 25 foot extension for the solar so I can move it further if I want. That was always a problem, small leash to get it into the sun. And that's why I have it portable, but I like to add another panel to the roof that way, if you're on the road, it's always change, it's always charging. And then if we pulled in at home, I wouldn't have to uh, pull out the, the uh, solar panel. All right, let's talk about the bed. It's all about the bed. Okay, for me, I wanted something that was comfortable that I could keep made. I didn't want to do a couch that went into a bed just because I know our lifestyle. We just like to jump in when we want to get in. Plus, it's a great lounging area anyway, like a couch. That's why it's kind of set up the way it is. But what we don't like is that it's a cross. So if Madonna is with me, she's got to climb over me. But then again, I'm old and I get up about five times in the night. So all she's got to do is pick one. So it actually works for us this way. And I was gonna change it and do a remodel and I decided not to because the problem is this and balance and weight and the way I have everything set up, the solar panels, the cooler goes back there. Okay, the front refrigerator, we use it only for food. You know, I may put orange juice or something in there, but the back, we keep a cooler there and that's filled with ice and I put frozen jugs in there as well and that's where all the beverages are and you can reach it from outside or you can reach it from there I flip it when we're inside I just flip it around and then you can reach down from the bed and get a beverage and that works out really well well if I were to change it um, everything changes so it's 70 inches five foot 10 inches across. I used to be 5'7". I guess I'm getting old. So now the doctor says I'm, because I just had my annual. Hello, I'm going to live another year. Yay! Anyway, I'm 5'6 now. So I fit in here really well. Madonna, she fits in here really well. She's a lot shorter than I am. So she gets, she's very comfortable in here. And, uh, you know, that's fine. I don't really mind it, so it's not a big deal. But, if we wanted to change it, here's the deal. Uh, you know, pretty much, you just lose a little space here. I What I would do is I would cut the back down and maybe let it flip up when you're sleeping. And down if you're using the back. 
I like that counter because if we cook back there and the weather gets bad and we need to move in, we can put everything on there and then access this inside. Uh, it works really, really well. You have 15 inches uh, between the bed and here. So, you know, my problem is this pull out um, and the weight and I can't switch it onto this side, all the batteries over there. So I would have to move everything and I'd have to, you know, uh, balance it right. So everything in here is balanced really well. Fireplace, we love the fireplace. Unfortunately, we can only use it when we're plugged in. I'm at home, so it's plugged in. Um, TV, never used it when we're out on the road because who has time? You're too busy. You know, I'm usually shooting and are ready to sleep if we're done for the day, so I don't really watch any TV. But I do use it here at home because home base parked is good too. Um, so back to the bed again, you know, that would give you an option. The other thing too is you could put a bunk across the top. We use that for pillows and blankets and stuff like that. It's all about the weight. You don't want to put too much weight up there. But you could put a ladder on this side to go up and then a bunk that way. That's the only thing that, the other thing that I wish I had was another bed. But uh, it's just not, no way it's going to work. So, I mean, I just, I can't make it work I, I, for, for the way it's set up. But it's all, like I say, when you build these things, you build them for your needs. This is built for my needs, for work, you know, power everywhere, a lot of different lights. Lights here, lights there. So, yeah, let me light that up a little bit. So... But it's possible in a 6x14. Another tip is if you are short like us, these things are great because you can take the foam out. So it has two of those small ones. I took one of them out and it uh, works really well. So, so normally I'm going to just that was just for demonstration purposes all right so here's under the bed now normally there's a skirt on the front of it so you can't see the front but uh, we use two milk crates for one for me one for madonna for clothes and then also the porta potty goes underneath the bed but I keep a lot of stuff under here. That's one of the reasons also I like keeping it as a bed because it's a lot of storage plus the weight to balance it out a little bit. And so our spare tire is under there. Uh, I have it so that the um, solar panel slides in onto the top part. I don't know if you can see the slats. They're kind of uh, right over here. And, uh, and then I, the, the solar panel kind of locks in with a loop. I also keep a little cabana that's uh, real small, portable, takes about two seconds to set up. And then I keep a um, 10 by 10 pop-up pavilion that has a screen room that goes in that can be used as a cabana a tent it's one of those 10 by 10 you can stand in them screen room two big doors on it we don't set it up very often but if, if i were somewhere that uh had you know if we were there for two three days uh then i would uh set it up or if we had guests and we needed another uh bedroom also, I do have the, the SUV. I keep one of these foam things in the back, uh, a twin, so that if I'm not pulling the trailer and I need a pay place to crash, I can crash in the back of that. So that's another option for another bedroom as well, is uh, sleeping in there. But uh, the 10 by 10 is nice because uh, it's a screen room and if you wanted to eat in there you could if it's a bug situation or something like that so 
but the only thing I don't like about that is the setup. So, uh, I just got a new one just because our one of our very first trips, I got a brand new one. I loved it. And when we crashed, the wind came in like a hurricane and took that thing off like a rocket and twisted it up to nothing. So here we are, four years later, I'm finally replacing it. So, and I've never really uh, got a chance to set up the screen room. Like I say, you're talking another probably hour of setup time. So, so that's uh, all on the right. Actually on the left, the uh, screen room is uh, there and I have the batteries all the way against the wall. Uh, I had two batteries and like I said, we ran out of juice, so I just bought another battery. So now we will have three batteries which is 300 amp hours, which will give us 150 amp hours. So that should be plenty. I think part of the problem too is if you have two solar panels, it's gonna charge it up a lot quicker and you'll make sure your batteries are always full. So uh, like I say, eventually I, and I may do it if we end up doing a road trip uh, longer than local, uh, I may put one on the roof and that's another video because I'm going to do it without putting screws in the roof. And the other thing is the grill slides in in the back. And this works out really good and like I say weight wise you know I think we come in around 26. Uh, I think we're definitely under 3,000 pounds. When you you know fill up your water, water's heavy the cooler's heavy. That adds a little bit of weight there too. But uh, you know, you'll notice there's not a lot of cabinets. Everything's light wood, and it's done for a reason. And we have plenty of storage. So, so I had this here before, and I am removing it. That's one of my upgrades because I found it more annoying. I just I don't know for some reason I just didn't like it there these work great if you need to put a drink it's got those for beer so that works out really good uh, this chair is comfortable it's a director's chair if I were to change anything it would be a more comfortable chair the problem is a lot of them are bigger than I want this one is got about a two foot by two foot uh, footprint and when they start getting too wide then you know like I said we like keeping this all open we've danced in here I mean it's nice having a lot of open space be able to stand plenty of room to change or whatever and uh, you know the porta potty has been great It'd be nice to have a little bathroom with a shower but uh, you know you want to keep it light you know, you don't want any water tanks. And actually, you know, wet wipes work really good. And uh, we have a portable shower that we keep in the back. So we have a gravity sink on the back and for the cantina. Love it. You can take that bag and heat it up. And then if you want to take a shower. My other idea was to mount a water heater portable on the outside on this side and uh, you could use the door, make an outside shower. All you do is grab one of your propane tanks and a five gallon. We always carry an extra five gallon, so we keep five in the front, five in the back, and then we keep a, uh, a smaller one. And then of course, we keep a couple gallons in the gravity sink over there. So that's that. This is the bed, it's comfortable. These blinds are fantastic. They're a cheap, inexpensive way to go. They worked out really good. We have a lot of windows and uh, that's the way I roll because I like to be able to look out. I like to be able to always see what's going on and I like the airflow. <clears throat> now, we're in Colorado. Colorado, you know, it gets hot here where we're at in Longmont. But uh, when you go in a high elevation, heat is more of what you need instead of uh, air conditioning. That's the greatest thing about it. 
one of the reasons we go to the high country in the summer is to get out of the heat. So uh, we rely on airflow, and we're going to talk more about that in one second. All right, we love, love, love the back. Uh, like I say, you build things for your lifestyle. You know, some people want to have uh, the back open because they want more of a toy hauler. Uh, I have it so that I can put the e-bike inside if I want in, in here, strap it to the side in the front, or I can fold it up and put it in the back of the SUV. But this, uh, having it, well, of course, the cooler goes below the counter, and then on the other side is storage for uh, the stove. Uh, I keep an extra water jug back there, so there's stuff that and weight wise also that helps uh, so that works out really well having that open is fantastic with the screen it's also a blackout curtain uh, is the reason is the airflow man you open that up and it's just fantastic and if it is really hot it blows it out really quick especially if you turn on the fan it's just real comfortable Plus, if you have a good view, then you have, you know, another angle to see it. That's why I designed so you could sit with your feet down and sit at that table, work, or eat if you wanted to. What also works out great is I can, you know, that's the cantina part. I set that up as the grill and uh, a stove and a table underneath the awning that goes back there and I can hang out back there and uh, make my coffee or have a beer and Madonna can be laying inside here real comfortable and we can still have a conversation so it's nice because somebody can be in the bed just lounging around and somebody can be outside and, and you still get that uh, great interaction so like I said it's all about the airflow I also designed it so that that uh, space up above where we keep the pillows all the way on the right I could uh, put an air conditioner if we needed to I don't really plan on going anywhere east and south so uh, mainly it will be Wyoming and north and whatever but you never know so but it's nice when you build these things yourself you don't have to do everything all at once you can add stuff little by little so uh, if I were to change anything, one of the things I would change is the back counter is about 19 inches. I would make it uh, a foot, you know, maybe 13 inches for, for good luck. But uh, that would be plenty. And that would give you a little more space with the bed. So, but, and I could also uh, cut it down because I do have, I could probably take about three, four inches off of it. And I may still do that. So, but like I said, we love it. And it's worked out really, really well. Uh, it's nice to be able to cook and put stuff there. And we like the gravity sink. So I'm going to take you outside. And we're going to look at the cantina. Oh, also, uh, before we go to the back outside, a couple things inside. Is the chair... Like I say, this is a, a director's chair. They make some really nice padded ones. I may upgrade it eventually. This is a great chair. It's really comfortable. But the thing that I wanted to show you is uh, when we're at home, because I have a step outside, is this, um, this is my step normally. And it's great because I keep all my tools, everything, all that stuff in there, so. I like having the extra storage. Just like I said, the ottoman is great storage for cords and stuff like that. Let's give you a different view here. Up on top of the window, we keep the fishing rods and a little bit of storage. You know, like I said, it's really light. You know, not big cabinets. I want to keep everything light, but I kind of went overboard just because of what I do photography wise and everything else with the power so the AC and the DC are totally separate I do not have an inverter when we are um, boondocking everything's solar 
and I do have a portable inverter I can plug in but the battery power seems to be an issue so one of the upgrades like I said is adding another battery okay so on this side um, here's my little inverter keep it up here I can plug it right in here for the TV like I say going on four years we've never used the TV on the road so but I like having it so it's here if we do need it this is fantastic built-in little medicine cabinet two spots here up top I keep candles little uh, ice bowl lanterns love this table and it's a flip out little triangle that just comes out a lot of storage underneath all right like I say really simple light pine pallet wood little nooks to keep stuff works out great it's where my electrical is this is a new addition something I've been wanting to get for a while just never you know it all adds up so we're always on a tight budget sorry Anyway, uh, indoor outdoor temperature has a little transmitter. I just keep it underneath and when we're in tow, I put it in and then when we get there, I put it back underneath and it's got one of the things I like about it, it has a clock uh, outside inside and that's great. Here's a controller. This is great and I uh, keep a remote everything on Velcro for the stereo. Yeah, I love that and these are the lights one for under here this is the outside and four in the front so i normally don't use these only when you really want to see and that's nice behind here you pull this out and this out these two screws is the dc panel that's where all the fuses are for everything in here that's wired so it comes in here, goes underneath, and the batteries are there. I'm going to add a shutoff, something I should have did in the beginning and never did, so that I can shut the batteries off. Right now, all I have to do is unplug the solar panel, but uh, and the electric is separate from the DC, and we use mainly the DC. So it's going to be nice adding that other battery. I'm going to make another video on that. Comments, questions? Hey, and also, uh, if you get a chance, please subscribe to my channel. All right, let's, uh, I think that pretty much wraps this up. You know, this uh, fireplace, also the fireplace is great. It's great heat, it's great ambiance, and it's cabin on wheels. You gotta have a fireplace. Another new addition is gonna be this, the monitor for the battery, so I can uh, you just hit this and it'll show a, a percentage, like 90%, 50%. 80 percent so that's going to be nice i'm going to mount that right here when i add the batteries and do that underneath oh also the end cap here is uh storage so have my i'll actually throw this into the ottoman but uh, we keep our shoes here so that works out fantastic love it, love it, love it. Um. all right this is a cantina and uh, this is a solar shower. The gravity sink works good just for washing your hands when you're back here. If you're cooking or whatever, if you've been out, you just wanna wash your hands. I normally keep a soap dispenser there. I don't have any of the water on yet because of uh, we still may have a freeze or two. I don't wanna take any chances till we get till May. Cooler right here. I keep some barbecue stuff down there. Um, this, I wanna move up. I'd like to change all these out to stainless. I'm looking for some stainless baskets to put up here. And uh, I think I'm gonna cut this down a little bit, make it just a little bit shorter uh, as far as something I would change. Never ever forget about um, your doors. You have a lot of storage on your doors. So I keep my table here, the tablecloth is inside. So this works out good. You could also do a flip up shelf if you wanted to not have it here you could have flip up or flip up over here 
I think what I'm going to do is I am going to put the solar panel on the door because I have uh, about four inches and if it fits hopefully it'll be just perfect so it'll just fit right in there it won't move around and I'll just hang it so then I won't have to put it underneath and it'll uh, be more storage so again we really like the back we like this being open we like the airflow screen I also keep uh, insecticide always keep that you never know when you're gonna run to ants or wasp or whatever but uh, your doors keep in mind for storage a lot of hooks a lot of bungees and you can do a lot of stuff with it we keep a six by eight that goes out that way works out perfect and it's nice and cozy under here when we're out in the outback okay one last look inside hey if you like this video please give me a thumbs up again questions comments thoughts tips please leave them down below and take the time to subscribe to my channel i greatly appreciate it nice and cozy now normally that bed would be made up but i got some work to do underneath wiring up that second battery and uh but it is cozy i like the open space here Let's see how wide we can go on it that's the part you know like i said we've even danced in here you know you're stuck inside it's nice to have a little bit of room to move around well, there you have it. Rolling Thunder, cabin on wheels, six by 14, cargo trailer, gourmet kitchen in the front, canteen in the rear. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this. Subscribe. Till next time. See ya.